Call Don now, 682-1270. News Talk 1270, KIML. News Talk 1270, KIML. Don Carpenter's show. Welcome back. It's 8.07, and uh, we're going to go right to the phones, and I want to welcome back to the program uh, from JunkScience.com, Steve Malloy. Good morning. Hey, Don. Thanks for having me back. It's 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 my pleasure, and uh, I, I will say I, I'm going to have to start asking you for lottery numbers because you seem to <laughs> – uh, be able to tell the future, the short-term future especially. Uh, last time we talked, uh, a few days after that, uh, you uh, published a story. I saw it on Breitbart uh, uh, predicting uh, that because of the low prices of a lot of, of, a lot of these coal companies, uh, that someone like George Soros would sweep in and start buying up some of these stocks. Uh, needless to say, within days – uh, your your prediction turned out to be right. You know, it, it's funny. We actually had a, a big rally here in Gillette uh, in support of the coal industry. The BLM yeah. was in town. Um, you know, they're thinking about raising the uh, royalty rates on us again. And we had this huge rally. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of people turned out. And the very next day, I see your news that uh, George Soros <laughs> – uh, buying uh, buying uh, shares of I think it was uh, Peabody and Arch, right? Right, right, uh, right, right. Yeah. How does this come about? Well, yeah, this is a this is something that uh, I thought about for a long time because um, you know the coal industry has historically, at least recently, uh, basically supported Republicans, and uh, you know uh, so Obama's war on coal kind of made sense politically. But then I started thinking, well. You know, there's trillions of dollars worth of coal in the ground, and are we to believe that you know the uh, the Obama administration and future administrations are just going to leave that in the ground? I mean, even if you want to run a socialist society, I mean, it takes money, and who is going to leave trillions of dollars of a commodity that is the fastest growing energy source around the world in the ground? Well, the answer, of course, is nobody. So, who's going to own the coal? And so that's when, you know, the idea of Obama's great coal train robbery occurred to me. And, you know, what Obama has done over the last several years is, you know, in combination with the glut, the unexpected glut of natural gas, is Obama has helped drive coal companies to the brink of bankruptcy. Uh, Alpha, you know, the day Obama announced the clean power plan, Alpha Natural Resources filed for bankruptcy. Uh, Peabody is a uh, you know dollar fifty stock. Arch Coal uh, used to be a forty three dollar stock, went down to twenty cents, and you know had to do a reverse stock split to get the stock price above a dollar. So all these companies are are on the edge. And you're right. The day after I wrote uh, uh, Obama's great coal train robbery, Soros comes in and he buys a bunch of Peabody and Arch. And you know it's true that. At this point, he only owns you know relatively small percentage of Peabody and Arch, but you know Soros is a billionaire and he's a crafty guy. He's credited with you know <laughs> with destroying currencies. He's he's not in he's not owning Peabody and Arch so he can make a couple million bucks. Uh, he's in there for the long run because there are trillions of dollars at stake. You know Peabody and Arch have billions of tons of coal in reserve. And that coal is not worth nothing. It's worth a lot of money. And so if Soros can get it for a song, which I think is what he's angling to do, he's going to do it. Now, interestingly enough, uh, a few days after Soros bought his Peabody and Arch shares, another environmentalist in Virginia picked up Patriot Coal for $400 million, and they have about 100 million tons worth of reserves. So, you know, what we're seeing is the changing of ownership from basically, you know, conservative Republican owners to Democrat owners, because the only people that are going to be able to make money uh, for sure with coal in the future are going to be Democrat donors. Because whether there's a Republican administration in 2017 or Democrat, a Democrat owner is going to be able to do uh, business because Republicans are business friendly. But if there's a Democrat administration, well, Republican coal owners is not going to cut it. 
It's, you're going to have to be a Democrat. So my, you know, coal has been demonized uh, to the point where, I mean, it's like the worst thing in the world. Um, you know, my, my basic prediction is that Democrats are going to start to, they're going to pick up these coal companies, they're going to contribute to Democrat politicians, and coal, and this is how they're going to rehabilitate coal. They're all of a sudden they're going to say it's clean, <laughs> it's vital, we need it, and they're going to make the trillions of dollars. Well, and they're not even going to even really change any of the technology. They'll just say no. they'll just cite the technology that's already in place uh, that we here in the coal country we know about, <laughs> but everyone else doesn't know about. Uh, I, I mean, this well, is well. That's right. Now, see, here's the, here's an interesting example. The uh, Virginia guy that bought Patriot Coal, he's actually he says he's going to charge a ten percent premium for his coal. And, you know, when you pay that, when a utility pays that premium, they're also going to get a carbon credit certificate with that, that he claims is going to be worth 30% of the emissions, which co coincidentally is what the Obama climate rule requires of reductions in, in you know, power plant emissions of 30%. So for an extra 10%, uh, this guy is going to, you know, whitewash their emissions. And, of course, carbon credits are total fraud. But... <laughs> If you're a Democrat, that's okay. You can get away with that. Well, it, it, it's uh, it's scams on top of scams on top of scams at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it's funny because the you know the uh, coal industry management has completely missed this. You know they they were asleep at the switch um, during most of the 2000s when the war on coal was ramping up. You know in in 2009. Uh, the companies were lured into supporting the Waxman Markey cap and trade bill, and and they've really failed to challenge this existential threat to them, and it's going to cost them their coal. Well, and here's here's the thing: it's not to say that there aren't true believers in this uh, in, in this alarmist warming science. Obviously, yeah. there 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 are, uh, but there are also people that are are. Uh, shrewd enough to know when to capitalize on uh, this um, uh, this yeah, sure. this well, look, fake market they've created. Yeah, I mean, look, there there are people that have a political agenda like Obama. There are people who have a financial agenda like Soros and Tom Steyer and Goldman Sachs and Warren Buffett. And so, you know, I think these people are going to pick up coal assets, profit from coal assets, and contribute to people like Obama. And they're going to feed off each other. And, you know, of course, there, are, there is a sort of a third class out there, the, you know, tree hugger, <laughs> true believer. But they're not really an important. They're not the ones driving this. What's driving this are the politicos like Obama and Democrats and the money men like Soros and Buffett and Goldman Sachs. It, it, you know, it, it almost kind of reminds me of uh, it, it almost kind of reminds me of the, the whole debacle with the Chevy Volt. And you get these, you get these supposed credits for buying this electric car, which coincidentally is powered by coal. Uh, and and the dealer, I think it was a seventy five hundred dollar uh, credit, and the dealers just jacked the price up seventy five hundred dollars. Uh, uh, the the yeah. whole thing, the whole thing's just. A, I mean, I remember, uh, you know, where I used to live, there was one sat on the lot. I think it was uh, fifty one thousand dollars, and. Uh, as soon as they announced these seventy five hundred dollar credits, all of a sudden it's fifty eight five, and it just sat there and yeah. sat there. Yeah, you know, I, I wrote a book in two thousand nine called Green Hell: How Environmentalists Plan to Control Your Life and What You Can Do About It, and it was an Amazon bestseller at the time. Uh, and that describes all this. I mean, when you hear the word green, you ought to automatically think fraud because that's what's going on. Oh yeah, well, and uh, and of course the uh, the whole thing with the Tesla, uh, you know, yeah, benefiting from all these credits as well. I mean, the, the it, it seems like the whole thing is just um, the the twenty first century version of a uh, snake oil yeah. cart going from town well, to right, town. Right, but 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 Don, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you, I mean, that stuff is absolutely fraud. Yeah, it's absolutely happened. But it's amazing. With the, I mean, the coal industry was a major industry. I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, until at the beginning, 10 years ago, it supplied 50% of our electricity. Now it's down in the 30s. But still, that's a lot. That's pretty important to our economy. It's a huge, huge industry. You know, uh, more than 80,000 workers uh, generates a lot of GDP. And we're just watching it being stolen by political action. 
It, it, it really is scary stuff. Now, of course, the last couple of days, I'm not, I'm not sure if you heard our top of the hour local news, uh, but the last couple of days, these uh, collapses of the market in China and here, I guess it's up a little bit today so far, but uh, I'm not sure that'll last. I mean, that's going to have an effect on the energy market as well, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, I think the big thing, the big news is that oil is, is really weak. And uh, that could actually, you know, benefit coal because, it, you know, the lower these oil prices go, that puts more pressure on the, you know, hydrofracking industry. The wells become, I mean, they're pretty uneconomical now. They become more uneconomical, especially the ones that are just producing gas. Um, you know, that, that could help coal a little bit. But still, you know, the coal companies, are, they're, they're so close to bankruptcy. Uh, the only people that are going to have the you know, the cojones to come to own them are going to be rich Democrats. No, and of course we have, I mean, around here we have employees of pretty much all of these companies, Arch, Alpha, yeah. Peabody. Uh, I mean, what would you say to employees of those companies uh, when they see stories about somebody like George Soros or Tom Steyer or uh, the guy in Virginia buying up a stock in their company? I mean, should they, uh, should they be ready for uh, the worst to happen? Well, you never know how these things are going to shake out exactly. I think in the long run, the coal is going to be mined. Um, and the coal may even be exported. You know, if Democrats own um, uh, Peabody and Arch, you know, I think those western ports are going to open up because the Democrats will be able to overcome or control the environmentalists who have opposed them so far. So that that you know that could be good, <laughs> good for the coal industry, oddly enough. But you know, it's the theft of the assets that is fascinating to what will be fascinating to watch. It, it, it's certainly, uh, it, it, and it's almost like the, like a like a, a Tom Clancy book or something like yeah. that, where this you know these, uh, and, it, and it's it, it almost seems cartoon like to describe George Soros like that, but. Uh, all of this is true. I mean, he's he's uh, wrecked entire currencies. So yeah. to think yeah. that he to think that he could go after one industry and wreck it really isn't that crazy. Right. Well, I think it's it's kind of Orwellian in a way, you know, because coal has been so demonized by the left, and then you watch it magically, it's going to be rehabilitated. It's just I mean, it's just like Animal Farm. Oh yeah. Well, and. and <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, this uh, this this carbon capture scheme that we keep hearing about, uh, they'll probably try to push that. But you even had a story about that recently. Uh, that's not even as good as we're being told it is. No, I think the uh, Kemper facility in, in Mississippi, which is the you know flagship clean coal project, I mean it's on the verge of bankruptcy too. Um, and you know George Soros and Warren Buffett, those guys, they're, they're, they are not going to be spending wasted wasted money on carbon capture because it's just silly. It doesn't make any difference. You know, you could um, the calculation is simple to do. You could shut down the entire country. You know, not just the coal industry, but the entire country, and keep it shut down for the rest of the century. And you're going to make precious little difference in terms of atmospheric concentration of uh, carbon dioxide, just a couple percent, which is completely meaningless. So, um, it's, you know, we live in interesting times. Well, and, and I imagine some of that money will still uh, end up going, being uh, put into these green energy, uh, green energy sources with the, the bird-killing windmills and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll still see that stuff, but... Uh, uh, I, I, look, I mean, it would be it would be nice if the coal industry were, were rehabilitated. It's just kind of scary uh, that these are going to be the guys doing it. Yeah, look, I mean, you know, I, I just uh, I read today in, in Cal California has raised two point two billion dollars through its you know cap and trade program, and what they're doing with that money is just redistributing it to you know favored political projects. And so coal, you know, coal is, is kind of like the tobacco industry. You know, in the late 1990s, the tobacco industry uh, settled with the anti-coal uh, people, and they gave them, they promised to give them $250 billion in the future. It, 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 you know, the anti-tobacco forces basically became partners. And so now they have no interest in killing the tobacco industry because they, they live off it. And the same thing is going to happen to coal. It's just, you know, the, there's going to be an additional tax on coal that goes to the government and to Democrats, 
and of course the owners are going to be much more friendly that way. And uh, that's <laughs> I'm just I am shocked that the coal industry let it let this happen to itself. Well, I mean, uh, you never know. We might end up seeing Sierra Club protests sponsored by the coal companies. That ought to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think you might see, uh, you know, a coal company owned by the Sierra Club. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, they'll they'll be standing with placards printed by coal money outside some nuke plant somewhere and yeah. protesting nukes or or protesting natural gas natural or gas, right. whoever right. the whoever the enemy of the day is. It, 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 these are strange times we're living in. That's for sure. Yeah. No, so for sure. Right. Uh, what should we look for next? What What's the next step? Well. You know, for the coal industry, I, you know, uh, a lot of, I guess the current coal industry has, is very excited about the litigation against the Obama climate rule. Of course, that's going to take years to play out. And I'm not quite sure that companies like Arch and Peabody have years' worth of cash. <laughs> so I think it's going to be interesting to see what Soros, I think Warren Buffett, you know, Warren Buffett is a classic value investor. Uh, Goldman Sachs, you know, news at Goldman Sachs. Uh, Go, I mean, Go, Goldman Sachs is a very, very savvy. So, I, you know, uh, these investors are going to come in. They're going to buy up the assets, and we're going to have a, a different coal industry, but you know, still a functioning one. Well, it, it, it'll it'll certainly be interesting to uh, interesting to see whatever happens. Uh, again, uh, Steve Malloy from JunkScience.com. Where can people find you? At JunkScience.com on Twitter. I'm at JunkScience. Okay, well, thank you so much for kind of explaining that to us, and uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to you soon. All right, Don, thanks. Hey, hey, thanks a lot. There you go, JunkScience.com, Steve Malloy. i got to get out of here. We'll be right back. News Talk 1270, KIML. Have a fundraiser coming up, charity event, new organization? Email Don Carpenter at BasinsRadio.com to find out how the show can help. Don Carpenter on News Talk 1270 KIML.